Your Excellency, President Nana Akufo Addo, President of the Republic of Ghana, and our host. Thank you very much, sir. Your Excellency, my dear sister, Samia Sulu Hazan, President of Tanzania, and one of the two female presidents we have in Africa, when women win, Africa wins. Your Excellency, Philip Nyusi, President of Mozambique. Your Excellency, Azali Asumani, President of the Union of Comoros, who will be joining us shortly by video. Your Excellency, Tiemoko Melie Kone, the Vice President of Côte d'Ivoire, and congratulations, sir, on your being Vice President for Côte d'Ivoire. Your Excellency, Edouard Ingerente, the Prime Minister of Rwanda. Your Excellency, my sister, Monique Nzanzabangamwa, Deputy Chairperson of the African Union Commission. A special welcome to Dr. Kwame Fodwa, former President of the African Development Bank Group. Let me tell you one thing about Dr. Fodwa. At his age, regardless of his health challenges, he has never missed a single meeting of the African Development Bank Group since I've been President. Thank you very much, sir, for all that you have done for the African Development Bank. We will never forget you. Honorable Ken Oforiata, the Chairperson of the Board of Governors of the African Development Bank Group. Honorable Ministers, Governors of the African Development Bank Group. Excellences, Heads of Regional Economic Communities. Ambassadors, Heads of Diplomatic Missions. My Board of Directors, Management and Staff of the African Development Bank Group. Eminent Members of the Press. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course, my darling and beautiful wife, Grace. I wish to thank you, Your Excellency, President Nana Akufo-Addo, for hosting these annual meetings of the African Development Bank Group in this beautiful city of Accra. I know that you launched the year of return for people of African origin to return to Ghana, which has been quite successful. Well, today, Mr. President, you have so many participants from across Africa, from across the world, for these annual meetings. I hope many of them stay and now return home because of the excellent hospitality of the government and the people of Ghana. <laughs> to them, I say, Akwaba, welcome. Welcome to the gathering of the friends of Africa, the partners of Africa. For this place today is filled with those who have faith in and hope in Africa. Yet, there are millions of Africans who we serve every day who are not here. Yet, we must see them. Yet, we must hear their voices, yet we must feel their needs in all that we do. For we do not represent ourselves, we represent them. Their lives are affected every day by climate change, majority of them women. Many of their lives are affected by lack of electricity, from a key struggling to read with candles or lanterns, or the occasional street light in their neighborhoods, to a mother who straps her baby on her back, using fuel wood and charcoal to cook, yet exposing herself and her child to the effects of fumes that endanger their lives. So, the theme of our annual meetings Achieving climate resilience and a just energy transition, it's all about 
people. Africa is the least emitter of climate carbon emissions in the world, accounting for only 4% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. Yet, the continent suffers disproportionately from the negative impacts of climate change, including increased frequency and intensity of droughts, cyclones, floods, compounded by desertification. Climate change is simply short-changing African economies. Africa suffers seven to $15 billion per year in losses to climate change, which are projected to rise to $40 billion per year by 2030. Africa has no choice but to adapt to climate change that it did not cause. To support the continent in doing so, the African Development Bank has doubled its financing for climate to $25 billion by 2025. Without any doubt, the African Development Bank is the leader on climate adaptation in Africa and globally. The share of our climate finance dedicated to adaptation is 67% highest of all multilateral development banks, and I was particularly excited when UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon singled out the bank in the UN General Assembly last year that the bank is leading and others should follow. <laughs> Your Excellencies, the bank and the Global Center on Adaptation, we are implementing what we call the African Adaptation Acceleration Program or AAAP, with the goal of mobilizing $25 billion in climate adaptation financing for Africa. The bank is also supporting countries to insure themselves against extreme weather events through its Africa Disaster Risk Insurance Facility. Today, the facility is helping nine countries to pay for insurance premiums to protect themselves and their populations from the effects of climate change. In Madagascar, our support of $4 million to pay for the full insurance of the country allowed it to get $12 million in payouts to compensate over 600,000 farmers when cyclone Batsirai hit the country. Your Excellencies, we need more financing to ensure many more low-income countries against these extreme weather events. The bank is leading on securing the food supplies, Your Excellency, for Africa in the face of climate change. Six years ago, with the approval of our board of directors, I launched the Feed Africa strategy of the bank. Our goal was to deliver climate resilient agricultural technologies to farmers and to feed Africa. We are achieving incredible success. Our Feed Africa work has already benefited over 76 million farmers with access to improved agricultural technologies across Africa. Our flagship program, which we call Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, or in abbreviation TAAT or TART, has delivered climate smart seeds to 12 million farmers in 27 countries in just two years. We are helping farmers to beat climate change. TAT delivered water-efficient maize to 5.6 million households in East Africa, an area hit by severe droughts three years ago. The drought was severe, but farmers secured their food supply with the water-efficient maize varieties. In Sudan, TAT financed the provision 
of 65,000 tons of heat tolerant wheat varieties. That is seeds enough to fill 665 Airbus 380 aircrafts. If you take an Airbus 380 aircraft, the people in it, the cargo, and the fuel is 98.4 metric tons. So when I tell you 65,000 metric tons, what I'm telling you is think about 665 A380 Airbuses packed on a landing strip. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sudanese farmers grew the varieties on 187,000 hectares. In just two years, Sudan reduced its wheat import by 50%. We did the same in Ethiopia. That financed the provision of 45,000 tons of seeds of heat-tolerant wheat varieties to farmers in Ethiopia. The farmers initially started with 5,000 hectares of these heat-tolerant wheat varieties in 2018. They expanded to 167,000 hectares two years later. And by the end of this year, they have expanded it to 400,000 hectares. I was in Ethiopia just last week, and I was very honored to be conferred with a honorary doctorate by the Addis Ababa University. And I was having lunch with His Excellency Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed of Ethiopia. As I explained to him the 400,000, I was so excited about it. He leaned forward intently towards me. And I was wondering, what is it? Why was he leaning forward intently towards me? He said, Akin, I was just waiting for you to stop because I wanted to tell you the following. And I quote him Actually, Ethiopia's wheat production is now on 650,000 hectares. <laughs> we harvested 2.6 million metric tons of wheat. Ethiopia did not import wheat this year. Next year, we will cultivate 2 million hectares on the wheat. And he concluded, we expect to export at least 1.5 to 2 million metric tons of wheat to Kenya and Djibouti. Incredible, simply incredible. Your Excellencies, we will not be talking about a looming food crisis in Africa if Russia did not invade Ukraine. To tackle the looming food crisis in Africa from Russia's war in Ukraine, the African Development Bank and the African Union Commission developed an Africa Emergency Food Production Plan. The $1.5 billion plan will be used support African countries to produce food rapidly. The plan will produce 38 million metric tons of food. That will be 11 million metric tons of wheat. That will be 18 million metric tons of maize, 6 million metric tons of rice, and 2.5 million metric tons of soybeans. The total value of the additional production will be 12 billion US dollars. So you can see with our investment of $1.5 billion to deliver $12 billion of food for the continent, that is a leveraging factor of eight times. That's what we are as African Development Bank. We're a fantastic leveraging machine for money. <laughs> the bank will deliver climate resilient agricultural technologies at scale for 20 million farmers. I am delighted that my board of directors at the African Development Bank approved the 1.5 billion Africa Emergency Food Production Facility last Friday, May 20, 2022. I want my board of directors to stand.
Thank you so much and thank you for what you do every single day. This approval, which is landmark, follows a global convening by the bank that I helped to chair in partnership with the African Union Commission of the African Ministers of Finance, Ministers of the Economy, Ministers of Agriculture, African Development Finance Institution, United Nations agencies, developed countries from around the world, and of course attended by my dear sister, Managing Director of the IMF, Kristalina Georgieva, who gave a fantastic support behind us. We all agreed it is time to support Africa to produce its food. It is time to have food sovereignty in Africa. Food aid cannot feed Africa. Africa does not need bowls in hand. Africa needs seeds in the ground and mechanical harvesters to harvest bountiful food produced locally. Africa, your excellencies, must feed itself with pride. There is no dignity in begging for food. Your Excellencies, the African Development Bank is also spearheading just energy transition for Africa. Since 2009, the bank has not funded any new coal projects. Not funding coal has now been formalized as a policy with our new energy policy approved by our board of directors. Africa has perhaps the world's largest potentials for renewable energy sources, especially for solar, for hydro, geothermal, and wind. The African Development Bank is implementing a $20 billion desert of power initiative in the Sahel to build 10,000 megawatts of solar power generation. These will provide electricity via solar for 250 million people and turn the Sahel into the largest zone for solar in the world. The bank plans to establish the Africa, Africa Just Energy Transition Facility, which will be used to support African countries to transition from heavy fuel oil and coal power plants to renewable energy based load, base load power systems. The bank is currently working with the government of South Africa in support of its efforts for just energy transition, for example. We are also working closely with the G7 countries to leverage their $8.5 billion financing promise for South Africa. Our approach at the African Development Bank will allow South Africa to raise $27 billion on the capital markets in support of its just energy transitions. And let me be clear, it will be able to do so without debt. As we look to energy transition, we must ensure three imperatives. First, we must ensure access and affordability to electricity. Second, we must, there must be security of supply of energy. And third, gas must remain a critical part of the energy mix for Africa. Let me just be clear, even if Sub-Saharan Africa triples the use of gas for energy, you know how much it will have contributed in terms of global carbon emissions? Less than 0.67 so, we've got to be realistic, pragmatic, for Africa will not be poor in an environmentally sustainable manner. We have to industrialize and create jobs. But we're doing so in a way that is green. Progress will depend on developed economies fulfilling their commitment to provide at least $100 billion in climate finance annually to developing countries. I thank the government of Ghana for its clear statement with regard to the issue of just energy transition and climate change. But I also now, as we now look from here, 
to go to Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt. I want to thank His Excellency, President El Sisi, who will be hosting us in Sharm el Sheikh. Thank you to the UK government for a fantastic COP26 that we had in Glasgow. Now, as we move from Glasgow to Sharm el Sheikh, let's talk words into action. Let's turn ambition into real money that will help developing countries. Africa can, Your Excellencies, accelerate its development and cope with other challenges such as climate change, debt, insecurity, and the effects of Russia's war in Ukraine on their economies if we better leverage the special drawing rights, the SDRs of the International Monetary Fund. And I want to publicly give a shout out to my uh, two people that I really think have done incredibly well in making that happen to all of countries around the world. My Secretary Yellen of the U.S. Treasury, who said we got to think big, and of course my sister, Kristalina Georgieva of the IMF. <laughs> Africa needs to have a reallocation of $100 billion from developed economies, as agreed to by the African heads of state and also at the Conference on Financing African Economies hosted by President Emmanuel Macron of France. The African Union has called for a reallocation of the SDRs to Africa, with a portion of it going through the African Development Bank. We should use the SDRs in more pragmatic ways to support economies. Providing SDRs also, through the multilateral developing banks, has several benefits. First, multilateral developing banks can leverage the SDRs. At the African Development Bank, we can leverage the SDRs by a factor of four times. Second, the SDRs can be absorbed by the bank as equity, which will expand our lending capacity to countries. And third, the SDRs that's leverage will be used to provide additional capital and financing to the developing banks all across Africa as part of the financing in common that we are implementing together with the government of France. The SDRs can also be provided as concessional loans to the African Development Fund. Providing SDRs also to the multilateral development banks will be game changers for accelerated development of our economies in Africa. Your Excellencies, perhaps the SDRs could be perhaps given a different name, probably called Supporting Development Revitalization. <laughs> that will be SDR. That way people on the streets will feel the effects of SDRs on their lives. At our esteemed shareholders, I would like to ask for your strong support for these efforts. Your Excellences, dear Governors, Honorable Ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, nowhere is the need for additional greater financing more than the low-income countries and fragile states that rely on the African Development Fund. This year, the African Development Fund, the concessional lending institution of the African Development Bank, will turn 50 years. In 50 years, it has provided $45 billion in support of the countries that are here. I know we have an event on Thursday to celebrate the African Development Fund. But because it's a public event, I would like representatives of all the ADF country state participants to rise. The countries that are donate that are part of ADF, we want to see you please rise. Thank you very much, because without them, there would not have been that $45 billion. Thank you to you and your governments. Your Excellencies, you can see African Development Bank Group at work right here in Ghana. Delegates, 
As you arrived in Accra, you came through the beautiful Kotoka International Airport. It was financed by the African Development Bank. As you drive right through Accra, you will ride over the 40 year Pokwase Road Interchange, a masterpiece of quality infrastructure, the first of such in West Africa and the second of such in the whole of Africa. It was financed by the African Development Fund. And Ghana used the funds very, very well. Money that was meant to do a three-tier interchange was stretched and used to do a four-tier interchange. Now, that's what we do. At the African Development Bank, we deliver great value for money. Mr. President, I'm so proud of you, and I'm so proud of your government. Please give it up to them and the minister. Please stand up. When I came, I told the minister, what is that your last name that tells, say, is twins? Atta? He says his name is called Atta. Mr. President, I said, maybe you should be appointing so many Attas into your government. <laughs> because Atta means twins, which means we get two for the value of one. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. I wish to express my great appreciation to each ADF donor country. You have stayed with the fund. You have supported the fund. And your countries have been partners in a journey of hope of the countries that are supported by the African Development Fund. To give greater hope, to cope with increasing challenges, the ADF countries need greater resources. One way to achieve this is to allow the African Development Fund to use its accumulated equity of $25 billion to leverage $33 billion from the capital markets. Then the fund will be able to deliver more. The fund will provide greater leverage for donor contributions, a greater value for money for taxpayers from all of the donor countries. The fund will become more sustainable as it will generate more income. The fund will reduce debt of countries as it will deliver much lower concessional lending rates compared to the very high rates these countries get on the global capital markets. Then together, we will build a more equitable growth and development from the middle-income countries to the low-income countries and to the fragile states, no development of any country will be left behind. Your Excellencies, as I close, thank you for giving me a great responsibility as Africa. And I thank all of our 81 shareholder countries for giving me a great responsibility. In 2015, when I was elected, I was very clear. The job being the president of the African Development Bank is not a job for me. I am on a mission of service. When you all generously re-elected me in 2020, I said the same thing. I am on a mission. I don't have a job. My life is only useful to the extent to which it is used to improve the lives of people. And no greater responsibility for me as an African can be greater and placed on my shoulders than to fast track the development of the continent of my birth. I am proud and humbled to be the president of the African Development Bank. Our boards are working, and they are effective and rigorous in carrying out their oversight functions. Our management is working. Our governance, control, and oversight systems are working. Our risk management systems are working. 
We are a very well run, a very well managed bank. We are a AAA rated financial institution, the only one in Africa. We have consistently maintained our stellar AAA ratings by all major credit rating agencies, even during the worst period of COVID-19 pandemic, thanks to your excellent support as shareholders. Your Excellences, my boards of directors, my boards of governors, shareholders, we will tell our own stories throughout these annual meetings Great stories of our relentless work and efforts. Boards of governors, boards of directors, management, and staff toiling day and night to make the continent and our bank better. But we will not be defined by concocted, outlandish, fabricated, tabloid, horror movie made up stories which some disgruntled people seek to paint about us, which are false, biased, ill-motivated, and completely baseless. <clears throat> Lies and orchestrated misinformation cannot be legitimized by the economist. We will tell our own story, not a story that some write about us, and our story is a great story. The African Development Bank was ranked by Global Finance as the best multilateral financial institution in the world in 2021. The African Development Fund was ranked by the Washington-based Center for Global Development as the second best concessional financing institution in the world in terms of development effectiveness, I am not in competition with anyone or any institution. But just to say, we are also our head of IDA of the World Bank. <laughs> and all 28 concessional financing institutions in all OECD countries. We will continue with humility to serve and to strive to make Africa proud. With our board of governors, our boards of directors, our senior management and staff, and our 81 incredible shareholder countries, we will build a much stronger Africa. A climate resilient Africa. An Africa with energy security for all. An Africa that feeds itself and becomes a solution for global food crisis, an economically resilient Africa, an Africa well on its way to achieving Agenda 2063 of the African Union, the Africa we want, the Africa which, like a lighthouse, will shine in the darkest of nights, the Africa we all are proud to call home. Thank you all very much.